hello hello again today welcome back to africa lady and a baby today i will be talking about how to deal with social isolation and how i have dealt with it in the last eight months um so now because of the rona going around everybody has had to be in some form of lockdown or social isolation or social distancing measures placed on them by their own you know by your own government and it's been really impacting on our lifestyles and how we do things generally and people who like to go out are now being forced to stay inside and it's affecting them and you know a lot of mothers are now having to homeschool their children having to deal with so many things all at once every day day in day out so here i want to talk about it because i have somewhat lived in is in isolation for about eight months now and it was very hard at first but somehow i'm getting used to it and so now that it's the topic of discussion because of the rona of course and now that everybody is you know going crazy about it it almost feels to me like hey welcome to my world and so i've decided to come on today to talk to you guys about how i've been able to cope with it and perhaps give you some tips on what you can and cannot do so first of all i'd like to start by explaining that i used to live in denver colorado which is a big city and before then i lived in lagos and before then i lived in england and um and before then i lived in lagos <laughs> so people don't think you know i'm just trying to say i grew up in in england no i only went to england for a few years of my life during my undergraduate studies and um yeah so i was there for about six years anyway what i'm trying to say now is um i always lived in big cities and i never actually lived in a place where i wouldn't really know anybody there was virtually nothing going on around me. There's really only trees outside <laughs> and now a few houses coming up. And so it's a really, really isolated lifestyle and it's very different from what I'm used to. And if you know what Lagos is like, it's a very big city and that's the major place I'm used to. That's the main city. That's where I grew up, right? I wasn't born there, but I grew up there. And so I'm not used to what the lifestyle that i now have but over time i've gotten to adapt to it and so i'm i'm here now to let you guys know the ways in which i've been able to cope and how that can perhaps help you in this time of social isolation so firstly um one of the first things you have to do as i say with just about anything I try to advise people to do is to accept your situation there's a there has to be some form of mental acceptance of what is going on around you of what you find yourself in of the situation you find yourself in that's the first way to actually deal with any problem if it's it's a bit like how they say you cannot go to the hospital if you don't even know you're sick you have to yeah it's a kind of saying like you have to know something is wrong with you to actually deal with it and by knowing something is wrong with you you're accepting that something is wrong with you and then you start working on fixing that problem so that's the first step you're in social isolation we are all in social isolation right now we have to be in social isolation because we have to protect the people around us we have to protect the vulnerable um, the vulnerable people in the population and so it's our responsibility it's each of us each of us have a role to play in helping with the situation at hand right now by staying at home and and you know keeping some form of social distance and not visiting friends or throwing parties at this time once you've accepted it there are very various ways that you can help yourself so say for example with me when i first came here eight months ago you know the first thing that it, the weather was very hot it was summer it was really the peak of summertime and it was so hot here so i couldn't even take a walk because every time i went outside literally for 30 seconds i'd start burning like 
it was so hot and then there were so many insects so i wasn't even stepping outside the door but um over time the weather weather got better and i started taking walks so that is one way one way to help yourself make it like a habit at least once a day to take a walk even if it's just one mile you can just stroll around a 30 minute walk will not do you any harm it's actually even good for you especially if you're dealing with underlying health issues that might require you to do some form of exercise to help you out eg high blood pressure which i've been dealing with um so yeah you should do some form of exercise and spend some time in nature get some fresh air it's, it's always very refreshing another thing that i've been doing that i found really helpful is meditation and when i say meditation i don't mean i'm doing this all day i'm literally just finding time even in the midst of the chaos to uh be mindful of myself be mindful of what i'm listening to be mindful of what's in my head so i always find some time to make my meditation a form of prayer so when i say meditation i don't mean just repeating the mantra you could repeat a mantra whatever works for you remember it really has to work for you but for me i have an app that i will just go to and put on some prayer and just listen to it and spend some time with god i'm catholic so sometimes i also say the rosary or like the divine mercy chaplet so that there, there are little things like that that i do that help me to meditate and spend time with god and i found that really helpful and really relaxing and then there's even some apps as well where you can listen to uh what's it called affirmations you can um you can uh podcasts there are different things you can do but it's really just about getting your mind to relax and be mindful and talking about mindfulness that's another way as well to help yourself being mindful of everything being mindful of even your breath being mindful of what you feel being mindful of what you think of being mindful and present in your situation you know because sometimes when we're in isolation anxiety and or depression can take over right and mindfulness is a great way to combat that right now um some people may ask you know what is at least i used to get confused about what depression was and what anxiety was but over time i got to understand it so depression is really just thinking of the past and being you know worried worrying about the past while anxiety is worrying about the future right and these two forms of worries are very valid and can happen to anybody at any point in time particularly in social isolation so mindfulness is a great practice that can help you to combat these things after that another thing is diet um yes you have to just eat well that's something i preach in almost everything for almost everything i did a podcast once on how to get pregnant if you haven't watched it sorry if you haven't listened to it you can always go back the link i'm gonna link it down in my description and you can always go back and listen to it and in that podcast i talk about what you eat and how there was a period of my life when i literally stopped eating meat for some time and i did see some effect so what you eat can always improve your mood and affect your mood right so when you're eating healthy drinking healthy smoothies and vegetables and you know all of this healthy stuff you will actually find yourself feeling better from the inside out it's a weird effect but i think it works drinking lots of water is not only good for your skin but it's also good for your general well-being and your health and so that's another thing to given some people might say oh i'm too busy well this is when you're busy and when we're not in social isolation so people can say oh i'm too busy to uh to uh you know to to live a healthy lifestyle i can't focus on what i eat because i'm always on the go well guess what right now you're not on the go you're in isolation you can focus focus on what you eat 
also another thing i really got into was reading and i started to read books that would help me and develop my mind i've read all sorts of books i'm not going to tell you some of them because i feel like some of them are a little bit private don't worry they're not anything weird but they're helpful books you can read your bible if you're christian your quran if you're muslim or whatever book inspires you you can always read self-development development books you can read about whatever interests you have um so besides reading uh, what else have i done of course my baby keeps me so busy so sometimes i don't even get to realize the time fly by because i'm always so busy with my child and you know that can be a good thing but that can also be a bad thing because i always end up getting so 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 exhausted on a daily basis and um it, i really just had to find a way to just balance it and balance things uh playing with children is a great way to you know if you have kids that's a that's a great great way to cope in in times like this you can always create activities games fun games i tend to you know i try to get myself to also enjoy my baby's toys so that i can play with him so even when i read books to him i i, I play with his uh building blocks there i mean he has this little piano if you follow me on instagram african lady and a baby you probably would have seen me once or twice playing with his toys i actually enjoy his toys there's a way we need to try to learn to immerse ourselves in whatever it is we're doing including our baby's stuff and you know i feel like us adults sometimes just don't even want to get with it we feel like and and i feel like this is one of the struggles i, I don't know because i don't yet have a child at that age but for parents who have their children in school and right now the kids have to be at home i find that they're really struggling because they almost felt like certain things were the responsibility of the teachers and that's not the case you know it starts with you as the parent everything is your responsibility first and so you shouldn't always put that prime that that responsibility on the teacher alone my my the, my child's teacher has to teach my child all the mathematics all the uh science that he has to learn no i feel like i have to learn it with him right i remember when i was much younger oh i feel like i'm digressing but i'll come back to the topic i promise when i was much younger in school i wouldn't you know certain things i wouldn't understand i actually always went to my father to teach me especially in english because my study my dad studied english language and so my dad was and even till today he's still my go-to person when I need to discuss certain techniques, technicalities in English, especially if I'm writing something or, you know, if I just want him to proofread something, I go to my father. And I feel that that is a great thing. As a parent, you should be the first go-to person for your child. Your child should come to you first. And so I think I was just trying to hit the point that you should enjoy activities with your children and not feel like it was the responsibility of the teachers. It's the, the, the teachers are secondary, you are primary. Um, having said that, I, I feel like there's so much more that you can do to cope with social isolation. Thank God today the social media, you know, don't feel like you have to be excessively productive with your day and you have to make sure you get all these things done or you have to do like i've said meditation drink water eat healthy exercise no 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 i think there should be no pressure you should feel you should be able to binge if you want to you should be able to go on social media relax and enjoy whatever it is you're watching on social media if it helps you mentally that's perfect you know it's everything is different for everybody for me i like to spend some time on social media come off it go on youtube come off it go on um pinterest whatever i enjoy at any point in time is what i do as long as i'm actually learning 
or helping my brain i do not i do not i simply do not and i stopped doing this a while ago i don't like to i don't like to watch or see anything that stresses out my mind so i've seen certain videos on on the internet you know say child abuse or some man beating a child that really bothers me and i don't like to watch things like that so when you, when people send me things like that i usually just delete them and don't watch them because it sticks in my head for a long time so you don't want to be watching things that will impact on you negatively and leave you feeling anxious you know because videos like that have even made me I mean, i've seen a couple in the past and they made me worried till today about my baby and putting my child in daycare and things like that so the my point here is don't feed your mind with things that are not helpful don't feed your mind with things that will make you unhappy don't feed your mind with things that will that will leave you feeling bitter so even if it means that you're on social media and you're viewing someone's profile and the person just makes you go like that like rolls your you know you roll your eyes if that's the feeling you get from viewing someone i recommend you block that person and the person doesn't have to know social media has made it so great i love it you can mute people and they don't even know and that's just what i do that's my coping mechanism and it doesn't mean i have hate for the person no hard feelings i just don't want to see what you have to offer and so i will mute you and i will just not watch you similarly if i don't want people saying certain things i mute them if i don't want them watching me because i feel uncomfortable i mute them so you know there's all these buttons too that we can use these are little things that we can use to cope in isolation because i mean you're already in isolation it's 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 like being imprisoned you know you don't want to be that bit more stressed you really want to just ease yourself uh i don't want to make this too long i feel like it's gone on for a bit long now so i'm going to round it up here if you have any questions for me any comments or any suggestions anything you feel you could add to this on social the topic of social isolation and how to cope in, with social isolation do leave a comment below don't forget to subscribe give it a thumbs up and ring the bell